What's up everybody? Thanks for checking out my channel. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all my latest videos. Also, hit that thumbs up button. It'll really help my channel out and I greatly appreciate it. In this video, I'm going to paint a realistic rose on a canvas using mostly my airbrush. I simply printed a photo off of Google Images. You can find a lot of cool photos on there. So if you wanna practice your rose paintings, just hop on there, just do a Google search for rose photography, or if you or someone you know has a rose garden, just use your smartphone, get some high quality photos of some roses while the lighting's good. I've done that for some of my tattoo work and airbrush work in the past. It works really great. But if all else fails, just do a Google search. So I chose this one mainly because it is a very high quality photo and it will be kind of cool because it will require some muted down colors. It's pretty much a monochromatic photo. Everything is kind of just purple tones. There are some warmer tones in there and then the stem and leaves and background looks like it's kind of muted down. So that's gonna be cool. That'll be some good practice. Lots of contrast. I like doing paintings and tattoos that have a lot of contrast, a lot of that black in there. It makes for a really cool, bold design. So if you wanna learn my method of painting a rose like this on a canvas, stay tuned. Step one for this process is going to be to make an outline to be used for a stencil. Since this is going to be a very realistic painting, I wanna capture every little detail I can. So to save myself a couple hours time, I am going to trace it, make a stencil, and project that to my canvas. Freehanding something like this, like I said, it would take me a couple more hours. So just because of that, I'm gonna do it this way. So you just need some basic tracing paper, your reference photo and a light box or in my case the light pad these are super cool they're very cheap very affordable you can grab these on Amazon I highly recommend these I've got a couple of them so step one trace your reference photo So I traced my Google image with regular tracing paper. I put that on a copy machine. I shrunk it down so that it would fit under my projector. And then I simply projected it to my canvas and traced the outline with a 4H pencil so that it would be really light. And now I'm ready to throw down some paint. Money, money. Money. 
This is my progress so far. I just wanted to stop the video for just a second and explain what I've done up to this point. So far, this is all just a really dark purple that I mixed up. It's the same color, even the light spots. I just moved farther away from the canvas and pulled the trigger back less so that it just did a light spray. And then the darker areas, of course I went closer and pulled the trigger back more to make it more opaque. So that is the true color that I've been using. And then like I said, this is just where I sprayed it a lot lighter. So the color that I'm using right now is actually a color I mixed up and it is a combination of opaque purple, opaque black, and transparent medium gray. These are all Createx colors. So I'm, I'm not using like any special high quality paint or anything like that. This is the same stuff I use for t-shirts. I just have a whole lot of it from where I do events each year. So I just use it up as much as I can. If you're gonna do fine art like this, I would recommend getting some better quality paint, like the illustration color sets, which I will do. I just have a lot of this Createx to use up, so that's why I'm using it. So this shows you what you can do with one color of paint. Now I am gonna be using a few more colors on this painting, but if I didn't want to, and I wanted to just keep it really simple and easy, I could do this whole painting with that one color, just spraying it lighter to darker as I go, and it would be a, it would still be a really good painting. It would look fine, but like I said earlier, there are some colors that are muted down a whole lot in the background of my reference photo, as you can see there, to give it kind of a dark, gloomy look feel in the photo. So that's how I'm gonna do the background. It is gonna be some lighter purples with more gray mixed in to mute it down. And if you're not familiar with muting colors down, all that does is makes it look kind of more like a pastel color, kind of like chalky looking. And you do that by mixing a gray in with whatever color you're using. So for this background color, when I mix that, it's gonna be probably somewhere around half gray and half purple as the main color. And then to go darker and lighter, I'll just adjust the purple in it and possibly add a little black here and there, possibly add some white here and there to lighten or darken it. But my main base color for this whole painting is gonna be that opaque purple. Straight out of the bottle, it's dark. That's my base color. And for the really dark areas, which I'm about to do next, I'm just gonna use some opaque black straight out of the bottle. So as you're about to see, when the time-lapse video starts back, I'm gonna be adding some black in here to the darker areas. And that's gonna make this rose pop even more and have even that much more depth to it. So I'm about to load up my opaque black get all the darkest shadows done and which there are some in the background so just using the black I will have a big portion of this painting already knocked out when I finish the black and after that I will go to the more muted down purples and start doing some highlights and stuff like that so let's jump back into it it's the money it's, it's the money it's, it's the money yeah.
the money, it's, it's the money, it's, it's the money, yeah. It's the money, it's, it's the money, it's, it's the money, yeah. So that wraps this painting up. It turned out pretty cool. That's how I paint a realistic monochromatic rose. In this painting, I used opaque purple, fluorescent violet, medium gray, opaque black, and opaque white. And to get some of these muted down colors, that's where I just mixed in the transparent medium gray. So if you've never worked with muted colors, that's basically how you do that. You just mix in the gray and that will mute your color down and give it more of a pastel, chalky, gloomy feel. So that's why this painting looks the way it does. And you can tell in the background, I muted that down a little bit more. And then the rose itself, I muted down some of it. And then there's a few little spots where you see a brighter purple. And that's where I use that fluorescent violet. And then I just muted it down with the medium gray just a little bit. And then of course I have the opaque black in here and the opaque white. And that was just for the main shadows and highlights to make it pop and give it that dimension. So I really recommend working with some muted colors. Practice muting your colors down. This works really well, especially if you're doing a painting of something really really bright and bold and then you can mute some colors down for the background so that it really pushes your image forward even that much more but in this case i muted down the paint that i used for the rose and the background i just muted the background down just a little bit more so it gives it good dimension and then like i said the fluorescent violet is just barely muted down so you can see like right here in this area and then a couple other spots, it's a little bit brighter. It gives it a little bit warmer look. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Comment below what you think. Give me a critique if you want. Let me know if you've worked with any muted colors before. There may be some paint sets out there that have some muted colors straight out of the bottle. That's a possibility. I know with all my tattoo inks, some of those come muted down straight out of the bottle. So some airbrush paint sets may too, I'm not sure. Like I said, this is just Createx t-shirt paint that I have a whole lot of. So I'm just trying to use it up so I knock out paintings with it every once in a while. So I hope you learned something from this video. If so, comment below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all my latest videos. Hit that thumbs up button. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to check out my online store, workhardneversettled.com. That's where you can grab a cool hat like this. I've got some airbrush t-shirts on there. I've got some motivational t-shirts, all kinds of cool stuff, some fitness apparel. So check that out. Link will be in the description section below. And like always, thanks for checking out my channel. Thanks to everybody who has subscribed. Y'all have helped my channel out big time. I greatly appreciate it. I hope I've shared some knowledge with you guys that's helped y'all level up your painting. And I'm going to continue trying to level mine up so I can share more things with you guys. So, that's about it. And until next time, peace out.